Well, I'm out in the woods today to take advantage of the fact that we had some rain yesterday, which gave us some relief from the burn ban. I'm testing stoves, stoves that I've had for quite a while, and I just was looking for an opportunity to get out in the woods and use. And this one I'm testing right now is the Vire stove. If you're interested in hearing more about the Vire stove, keep watching. Okay, I took the Vire stove apart and put it back in its package so I could show you how it arrives. So it does come in this nice uh, Cordura type nylon case and it's I'll give you some measurements and weights and all that type of thing and there's the website the Vire stove. The Vire stove is made and is shipped from Israel so and it actually didn't take too long to arrive I was quite uh, quite pleased with it so let me give you a few measurements so as it is packaged right now it uh, has a 12 inch length a seven and a half inch width and a two inch thickness so it's it's not a small stove either and it weighs in at three pounds and I'll put the metric weight on the screen and in the show notes below for those who prefer this in metric and yeah so it's not a lightweight stone at th uh, stove at three pounds I think it's just on the border of what I might refer to as a backpacking stove it uh, you know I guess if you're going out with two or three people as you'll see it'll have the performance to to do a lot of cooking with if you're going out with two or three people and you're sharing the weight of all the equipment you're taking then maybe three pound isn't too heavy but on a day-to-day -day backpacking hike <laughs> It's heavy and big, as you can see. All right, enough about that. Let's take it out of its package and assemble it. In this little side pocket, if I can get them to slide out for me, are the two additional pot stands, a crossbar pot stand. Do I need it? Uh, it doesn't add any height, but it does add a little bit of stability to pots that are larger in size, as you'll see when I get it assembled. Put the case aside. Now, assembly of this is very easy. There's very uh, low learning curve on it. And I want to show it to you in slow motion, more or less, so that I can show you some of the features of it. So it just unfolds, folds up, and now I'm going to bring it back together like this. And, and as I do, right here on this side, there are pieces of metal, paired pieces of metal, that provide a little channel here and here that are going to line up with the edges of this part of the stove. So when I put those together, I can line them up. And uh, I guess one of the things I was concerned about is, is this going to warp or anything over time? Well, it hasn't yet, but uh, that's part of what a long-term review is. When you get it into this V shape, on this side of it, there is a swinging bar that reaches over and locks down. That is a little finicky, I'll tell you right up front, and I have a few other comments on it, but it will go together. At least on this version, it's a little finicky to get that piece locked on. As you can see, I'm struggling with it a little bit. Uh, I have done nothing to modify this to improve little things like that, because I wanted to give it a, a test just as it, it arrives. And... Interesting, I didn't have this problem after the other burns, but uh, maybe that's what all these long-term tests are about, right? All right, okay, now we're back together. And if I can get that little locking bar to snap in place. Hmm, there, okay, took a second. Now, on the bottom are legs, and the legs are designed to swing out. It's kind of interesting. You look at them and say, how is that going to work? And really, it's, when you think about it, it's really easy. That's it. All, of, all I've done right here is just swung them out. And I'll face it towards you, but of course it won't be when I get it inside the fire pit. And here's the feed chamber. So this is where the wood is going to go. And you'll notice that it's a two-level affair, so that the wood goes into the top, and it raises the wood off of the bottom of the burn chamber. So in the base down here is a uh, burn plate that has a lot of holes in it. So the air will travel underneath the wood down the length of the burn chamber. And right, the fire in a, in a rocket stove, and that's part of the design. And that's a, part of what makes them, if they're well designed, makes them such a great stove is it's all the wood that's engaged in the fire is only limited to what's right 
under the chimney, right through this part of the stove. So there's just a small portion of the wood, so it doesn't actually have a chance for all the wood to become engaged. And that allows for the wood to progressively move itself down into the fire. And I say move itself because with this angle, it does tend to slide down on its own. Once in a while, I have to give it a little push to, to get it down in, in the coals. But the, the, the benefit there is that the wood will burn more progressively and not all at once, and you'll have a more controlled burn and it will be limited just to this. And you say, now how does that happen? Well, it happens because of airflow. So what happens is, as the air is drawn in here, it pulls the smoke and the, the air and the oxygen down into the burn chamber and up to the chimney. And the chimney is what does most of the drawing. Just like a chimney in your home, this will actually pull air up into through here. So while you don't get smoke coming back out through or flame or anything else, it works very efficiently. And there's one little extra thing, which is a bit of a damper. It covers over the wood port. And what I found in use so far is that this slows the burn down a little bit because, of course, it cuts off some of the air. So if you have a really hot fire burning inside and you want to slow it down for a simmer, that, that goes a long way to slow the burn down. All right, so that's the basic elements of this. What I'll do now is I'll set it up in the fire pit I have here right beside me. We'll get some sticks, we'll get a fire on, and maybe I'll make some coffee with the water. Okay, so I have the stove set up in the fireplace, and I put the camera in a position where you should be able to see down inside the feed port and the airflow chamber underneath, and right down to where the fire will be burning. And, and then, of course, seeing the flames come out of the top when it gets going. So what I've done to get this ready is I put a little birch bark right down on the bottom where the burn plate is. And then I just stacked some uh, very fine twigs, spruce twigs, pine twigs, what I could find around here, inside here. My experience is to get a, the best way to get a, a rocket stove going is to do a little bit of a preload in the chimney before I start feeding fuel down the, fu the feed ramp there. Um, it does a couple of things. It starts to get the draw going up the chimney and then uh, establishes a bit of a coal base down inside and then I'll be able to add fuel directly in here. Now I do have a bunch of pine sticks in here but I also have some little splits of uh, oak and uh, maple and birch that I just pu pulled from off some dead standing around here that they were cut for a smaller stove but they'll work fine because yeah, I'll just have to slide them down and, and you'll see that happening. All right to get this going nothing very bushcrafty. I did have a piece of birch bark sitting right here somewhere. There it is. I'm just going to light the birch bark, slide it down inside. I could have done it from the top as well. And just to aid the birch bark going I also just put in a few slivers of fat wood from around the area. So actually I don't think I even have to push that down. That'll get going very, very quickly. Now, like other stoves, uh, you know, it takes a minute for them to get going efficiently or effectively, but not too long as you'll see with this one in a second. A little bit of smoke backing up through because it hasn't quite started drawing up the chimney yet. By the way, the reason these are referred to as a rocket stove, I would have called it a chimney stove because of the height of the chimney, but the reason they're referred to as a rocket stove because if it's designed well enough, uh, the air being drawn in at high velocity actually sounds like a rocket engine, or at least that's what it's supposed to. Uh, I've tried a few rocket stoves, have not been too impressed with their, their operation. This one, again, it's only had a couple of burns, but uh, so far I have good things to say about its function. Bit smoky right now. That's not uncommon for a lot of rocket stoves to when they first, or a lot of stoves, period. Even uh, wood gas stoves quite often will have a bit of a period before they start working effectively. Now, now you can see where the chimney effect is coming into action and it's actually pulling air down through the feed port and up the chimney. No more smoke coming out through the feed port. And if I lean in close enough, Hopefully you can pick up that roar because that is just roaring down in there. And now I can start feeding in some fuel. One of the nice things about a stove like this is you don't have to process your fuel small. You can leave it in fairly long sticks. Makes it a little easier to get them in there as well. I'm just going to put a few of these softwood sticks and then I'll start with my hardwood sticks as well. So you're getting an idea of how a rocket stove is supposed to work and how this one, the fire stove, is working. Now I'm going to, of course, put on a pot of water. 
With all that flame, I have to be a little cautious of how I do that. All right. So a little bit of a dampening, but not much. Let's just give it a second and see what happens. I'm also going to back the view up a little bit, see if we can get a better overall look at it. So a little bit of smoke, that's because it's still burning fuel that's in the chimney. And once that fuel that's in the chimney is consumed, and then it's burning nothing but the fuel that's going through the burn chamber, there will be a whole lot less smoke. I think we're starting to see that happen now. And to add to that, of course, I'm using softwoods, which tend to smoke a lot more than hardwoods anyway. All right, I think we're starting to see some efficient operation here. I like how this is drawn. I'm just going to throw in a couple of pieces of hardwood. And because of the length of the burn chamber, I have to kind of tap them down, make sure they get down into where the fire is taking place. Now, I don't think I can do it right now, but because of the length of the wood, pieces of wood, but if I wanted to slow the burn down, just flip that, that uh, flap over and it will dampen off some of the flow of oxygen into the burn chamber. But you can see right now how little smoke a properly designed wood stove will give off, even burning slightly damp softwood. Okay, this wasn't meant to be a full review because I've only had a few fires in it, and I do have a few comments on it, things I'd like to see improved, which is not surprising. I don't think there's too many stoves out there that don't have room for improvement, but uh, we'll get to that in the long-term review. All right, so what are my initial thoughts on the Vire stove, rocket stove design? Well, you saw me struggle a little bit with the assembly of it, and I intentionally left that in. I didn't edit it out or redo that section of the video because I wanted to show it what I was really experiencing with this because it wasn't the first time I had some issues lining this up and putting it together. I think the little bit of ash still inside the stove blowing out of it. Um, I think it is well designed. I think that maybe there could be a little bit better quality control and I won't get into too much detail on that right now uh, but when I do the full review I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm, what I mean by that. Um, but functionally I'm willing to give up a whole lot in terms of quality control as long as it goes together the way it's supposed to and works like this one does. I mean so far this is exceeding my expectations of what a rocket stove, a foldable, collapsible, packable rocket stove could do. I'll tell you, maybe it was because of the bad experience I had with another one, an ultralight titanium rocket stove that I've reviewed previously on this channel, that uh, <coughs> I didn't hold out the highest hopes for this, but um, um, I do now. I, I think that this is going to turn out to be a highly effective rocket stove if, uh, well, we'll address the quality issues, the quality control issues later. It's nothing that is uh, a deal breaker, let's put it that way. It's just something that I think they could have done a little bit better in the engineering and assembly of it. But other than that, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going in and on about it, about how well it works, because I'm just that impressed with it. But this is not a long-term review. This is just an initial review. So I want to try it a number of times. I'll take it right into the winter for cold weather, because I find that cold weather can really have a negative effect on rocket stoves. Uh, a lot of the true rocket stove designs have an insulated chimney because there's a, a risk of losing heat re laterally radiate you know, through the chimney but uh, uh, yeah so it'll, this will have to wait till the cold weather comes before I can do the final tests on this and bring it back to you for a, a full long-term use review. Right now I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. Okay that's all I have to say about the Vire stove uh, but until I come back with a long-term review or at least another video get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.